What's going on, guys? Welcome back. We had a crazy week of Marvel Snap with Alliance's arrival. We had two major patches that brought a lot of change to the game, as well as a new leaked season that Alex and I are going to break down some crazy cards come into the game as well tuesday starts a brand new season and with that we have a lot today to talk about on the snapchat and as always i'm joined by the one and only mr alex kocher for the 92nd week in a row my friend and we have a confession to make we kind of thought this is the first week uh well this last week was the first week in a long time that there hasn't been a new card and it kind of got our gears messed up typically right now is when we do the end of the season recap we talk about the season to come if you're looking for that that was last week's video so you can go find all that uh on that video i'll go ahead and uh, put it in the description and it can uh, show up on screen right now alex but we do have a lot to talk about this week as there was a massive patch there was alliances and uh, there's always good stuff to talk about here in marvel snap how you doing this week bud doing good buddy and yeah there is lots of stuff to talk about we have a very different show a lot more kind of free-flowing topics here let it be known cozy that last week i was like yo i think this is a week early and you're like no no it's not we're ready to go i'm like okay let's hit it for whatever reason i thought it was time for the new season i even like prepped my week because i always prep really heavy on like monday tuesday uh to make sure i got everything and all my ducks lined up especially the first week because there's the double card thing going on which i think if they do deadpool's diner in the future with a card reward they should just make it to where that first week doesn't have the double week and then you kind of have the problem solved right uh but i don't think any of us knew how long it would take to get cassandra nova and all that all that good jazz but if you're looking for the recap it's on over there uh today we have a good amount to talk about alex and uh you know we could just jump right into it as the summer is coming to an end i want to ask this actually before we begin uh some people Hey, listen, some people watch it, some don't. Uh, any Olympic watching yourself over there, bud? I haven't had a chance to watch that much. Um, you know, Canada's been doing pretty well. Uh, I've been watching a lot of the American stuff. You guys are doing great as well. I'm also seeing some controversy on a lot of, like, the, the, the metal charts. They're combining all the European countries into one standing so that it goes above the United States, which is kind of interesting. It's just, like, EU countries instead of, like, them individually. But, like, yeah, you guys are doing amazing in the States. Like, I mean, you guys are literally an athletic powerhouse, so it doesn't surprise me. My wife, uh, like, didn't grow up watching the Olympics a ton, right? I, I, I thought, like, almost every family grew up watching a lot of the Olympics. Like, we, uh, as a family, like, loved watching it. specific events. You know, like, ice skating was big in the Winter Olympics. Uh, and I'm always about the Summer Olympics. I love from, like, for whatever reason, like, beach volleyball duos is really interesting to watch for a lot of reasons. And then also uh, the swimming, anything swimming. But now this year, there's, like, the pistol gun range stuff is blowing up a little bit. There's some, there's some golden memes. Have you seen the guy? There's a meme that said, when you sneak into the Olympics, and it was this, like, diver that was, like, going up, and, like, all right, he's going for the jump. And, dude, the dude does, like, two flips and lands. <laughs> I think it was supposed to be, like, smallest splash. Dude lands, like, completely horizontal. And you're like, how long is this guy trained? You feel bad for him because you know he's put in the hours. But uh, there's been some prime meme material in the Olympics this year, man. Uh, but, yeah, it's always a good sport to watch, man. Always cool to see. I always think about how much pressure they must be under thinking like, hey, I trained for four years and like I can literally just slip on this diving board right now. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, it's oh, yeah. it's crazy how easy it can kind of slip through their fingers or the margins are so incredibly tight. Like you watch like these sprinters and like the difference between the guy who wins gold and the guy who like finishes second is literally less than a blink of an eye. It, like literally less than a blink of an eye. And it's mind blowing. At the time of recording this, funny enough, and I love this guy, he's like big in card games. If you don't know, like all of his qualifiers, he like held up like, you know, uh, blue eyes, white dragon. And like, he's, he's a total nerd. I love it. He just won for the US by... 0 0.005 of a second like it was it was like a nose man it was like this this much and it's so crazy that it all like it was the 100 meter right which is nuts because that's so it's so quick like you train for years man just for it to be how you perform that day. and like what if you get sick you know what i mean like what if you happen to have a tummy ache before the race and it all lines up like right then man it's crazy do you think you could beat me in the 100 meter dash absolutely alex i could um, i think i could beat you uh in the I, you would beat me in a lot though like we would we would split different uh different events if you will yeah like, what do you okay win. what do you think you'd beat me in easily uh any i mean i mean anything running i, I feel like i've got the i got the edge on you how would you be in beach volleyball i feel like it'd be okay 
I mean, I literally, I was literally like a borderline like semi-pro goaltender in soccer. So my hand, I got pretty good hands. Okay, pretty good okay. hands. I played high school volleyball as well. Good at I, uh, manipulating the balls. So today, guys, we're going to talk about all the stuff you know. What we said in the intro, Alex. What are we talking about on your side of the Snapchat? Cozy, we're going to be talking about our favorite cards at every cost. One of our favorite things to do, and I can't wait to do the season recap with you. We're also going to be talking about snaps, forgotten cards. Cards that might be really good that you're just not playing, or cards that you're not playing because they're actual dog water. We'll be discussing those, and, uh, and then obviously we're going to be doing the Snapchat mailbag once again. And the season video did come out for the upcoming season. Nothing changed too much. Uh, Marvel Boys did the same, so we still say he's a really good card. Uh, and we're, we'll talk about it here in just a moment. Blob went down, and so obviously maybe the spotlight week went down a tad bit. Uh, but... I will say everything stands the same except for Wiccan. He went up to a 4-7, I believe, which is, uh, it's nice. It's definitely getting, you know, a bit more stats there. So, you know, not the worst. Yeah, that means he sucked like I thought he was going to. It's good. Yeah, right. Like any time, any time, <laughs> we have seen it, man, between Ajax and other cards. Any time they add power to a card, most likely it wasn't going to perform uh, well in the live testing. But uh, let's go ahead and jump right into the subjects. Again, pack week, and we're going to start with we had double patches. This was really cool, man. We had not only the monthly patch, but we also had the OTA. And the monthly patch brought very little change, uh, but we did get two rather large changes, if you will. Uh, and the first is to Moon Knight, right? Uh, and we will combine this with Apocalypse, who also went up in power as well. Moon Knight, though, who has long been a card that has just not been great. Pretty much, if you are a discard option now that doesn't have any type of specific targeting... Uh, you're not played. It's too random. Doesn't matter. Sword Masters are 3 billion. Doesn't matter, right? People don't want to risk the way that that deck kind of works, right? And snowballs. This Moon Knight now, though, absolute fan. Love what it does. Love the whole new effect of it being an even cost card. I also think it's kind of cool that that's the first we've seen of this in, in a sense. Uh, and with this, they also changed the way some of this stuff works with like cost amount and how if it's in your hand, right? Like if Elysium hits and a five cost goes to a four, Moon Knight will now discard it where that wouldn't have happened in the past. What are your thoughts on the new Moon Knight? It's interesting because I, I like the change. I'm happy that Moon Knight uh, got some love and I, I'm like it was a long time coming, right? Uh, if Moon Knight would have been the snaps forgotten cards list, right? Like it was a card that I've seen almost no play. However, my first like instincts were when I was reading the change in the text, I was like, this this is it's kind of complex. I, I didn't wasn't a huge fan of the initial complex. Like, why does it have to be an even cost card? Why we can't we make this text a little more simplistic, a little more um, you know, straightforward? But then as I played it, I was like, okay, I get it, but still, like, I, I don't know, because like, you know, um, if swarms is zero, apocalypse is zero, then you have the random 50-50s. So like I, I'm not sure if I like would like this to be Moon Knight's final form but it's an improvement. I think so. He, I think for the cost amount of how much he cost, but then the biggest effect of him, right? Like the biggest effect of him is him getting rid of a card in your opponent's hand. I think like that is why you're going to be playing Moon Knight in your deck. And now you have a way to benefit yourself for that more dependently. And that's why I think it's just a good buff around the board, right? Like there's going to be associated risk, just like Blade has that risk, right? Where you could get rid of your Dracula, right? I think there's only two bad cards really uh, that you don't want to get rid of with a Moon Knight. Dracula obviously being one of them. But Proxima Midnight and Apocalypse and Swarm all getting a way to really help them out is really cool. I think it's really beneficial to, to the archetype. My review on Discard after playing it a lot, I mean, I played so many hours of this when this came out, is you still have to do so much that other decks have to do very little to get the same result, right? And, and that in itself makes the archetype still not feel perfected. But I like discard. I enjoy playing discard. It's a very fun uh, uh, kind of archetype to play within the game. We're going to talk about it here at the very end. Uh, look ahead, new cards. Uh, I think it was September uh, now or October that the cards have been revealed. And there's a discard option in there that's going to spice up the archetype uh, massively, dude. And so that's going to help out. But yeah, I think Moon Knight, Apocalypse, glad to see them giving love back to discard in general. And I think it goes with the motif that they're trying to make more playable archetypes in the game. Although I think there's a card we're going to talk about shortly, which counteracts that. Um, but I just, when you're playing Marvel Snap, there's two things that really affect the experience. The types of decks you're playing and the types of decks you're playing against. The more archetypes that are viable in Snap, 
like legitimately not overpowered, not underpowered, that makes the enjoyment factor much higher. And it's also worth noting that something like a Moon Knight's tricky to balance because it's a very feels bad card if it's OP. Like if Moon Knight's everywhere, like, you know, uh, Black Widow was when she was a, remember when we asked for Black Widow to get buffed and it did, and then everyone's hand was filled with Widow's Bites, like that was like, well, great, this actually sucks. I wish I never asked for this buff. Moon Knight could be very much the same thing if your hand's getting blown up, which is exactly what you tried to do, sir, yeah. by the way. Delete their hand, how dare you. We will move to Doc Ock after this, but I think it's funny that in one week they get rid of Doc Ock for the way that he plays and pulls and kind of disrupts the game, and then they buff a Moon Knight, which does the same thing, right? But I was looking at this card. What I like about the Moon Knight is it's a card that everybody has, and it, it, it helped uh, eliminate the need for Corvus in every single deck. It helped eliminate some of the need for some of the other cards that you have to play. I looked at Ola discard. There's really only one card to two cards that I don't play in my discard decks, being Swordmaster and uh, Hellcow, right? I think these just both have different better cards that you can have within the deck. Other than that, though, they've done a good job here at making every single card in this archetype feel good. And I think personally, in my own testing, I just didn't need to play Black Bolt a lot with Stature. Now that Moon Knight exists, it's like you already have a couple cards now. If you do especially the Silver uh, Samurai uh, with Moon Knight, you just have cheaper options to get the, the Stature down, which is uh, definitely cool. Definitely nice to see uh, because 5-7 now feels lacking uh, in going after the lowest cost card from your opponent's hand. Uh, but as I just alluded to, uh, we, we had a huge nerf to villains. The only other thing we had changed on the, uh, the Tuesday update uh, was to Shadow King, which at this point, right, Alex, I think Shadow King has gotten to the place of like, how how are we not playing? How are people not having this in decks as often as Shang-Chi? One of the few great cards left in, in combos that have not been touched was Thena, who people thought would be in this patch because she's being obviously a villain per se. Um, Shadow King is the biggest answer to that. On top of so many decks trying to make this uh, not permanent power, uh, but temporary change that Shadow King can affect, Luke Cage can no longer stop him. Shadow King is insane. It's always been insane. And I think one of the tricky things, I find that a lot of people tell me that they're cutting Shadow King because they don't want to commit two energy on turn six or seven. Um, and I totally understand that, right? Like that means you, you have four energy left to make some sort of play. And like that amounts to not as much power as dropping your big Red Hulk or something, right? Something like a Red Hulk counteracts the desire to play Shadow King because you have these big, bad, massive turn six plays. But Shadow King will single-handedly win a location. It'll win one location. It's uh, It catches people by surprise, whether it's Angela, Athena. Athena can be tricky because it has the Havoc effect where it kind of will proc afterwards as well, right? So it kind of has that little bit of damage mitigation on Shadow King. But, like, Blob gets destroyed by Shadow King. I can't tell you how many games I won against Erisham players when Erisham was the absolute hotness with Blob, Mystique, and all the, you know, Abs Man stuff. And I would just Shadow King the Blob. You yeah. could Shang-Chi it, but it's literally double the cost to Shang-Chi. Yeah. And so, like, Shadow King is a very legit tech card that is criminally underplayed in Marvel Snap. What else is criminally underplayed? We would be remiss not to talk remiss. about this. Alex, it's your time. It's your time to talk about it. It's happened. The new player experience, they, they let it go. They let it go. Watu, the Watcher. Uwatu, at the start of the game, he shows all the locations now. You can see them all, Alex. They've done it. They damn done it. I actually honestly really like this. I've been having so much fun. Uh, the original version of Uatu had to be in your hand for him to show the locations, which always felt absolutely horrible. Now, no matter what, you see the locations. It is fun. Now, here's the thing, though. This is not like a, you know, synergistic card in any deck, right? But if you can squeeze them in, like where I did, I had like my Cope Erisham deck, which has now become famous, my, my Cope Erisham deck. I'm playing uh, Uatu in it. And seeing those locations early in the game, like I'm telling you, man, like I'm setting up bar with no name plays. I'm, uh, you know, the what's the one, the uh, the one that draws two? The one from Midnight Suns? The oh. Castle? Not the, yeah, the Abbey, the Abbey. Yeah. So I have the Abbey, and I know, okay, perfect. I'm going to put Uatu there, and I'm going to put someone else there and turn two, draw a card. It has been so good. I've actually really liked it, to the point where I've played so much Uatu since the patch that when I take Uatu out of the deck, because let's be honest, he shouldn't be in the deck, I'm like, I'm actually like feeling anxiety because I don't, I can't see those locations. He feels like, to me, like uh, Howard the Duck in the sense of like, you know, it's, it, it gives you this ability to do something that you don't need, really, but it's cool to have. And, and it's the two power right at the end of the day. Just so much 
other upscale with these other cards in here that you can use and abuse and so uh you know that's why we asked them to do this so long ago because it's just like it's not gonna do any it's not gonna like you know make everyone all of a sudden play this card and it ruins the locations and how they work so definitely i'm glad that they did it uh but let's talk about it man. let's talk about the big patch the end of the villains in one patch usually there's a lot of buffs in patch right this time around we just got just a slew of different nerfs the only other buff outside of apocalypse was war machine going at four seven not that big of a deal we can pretty much just sum that up in that one sentence but the nerfs man we start with the one that kind of led the thumbnails led the charge and funny enough i think you have to press forecast to still find them it's uh, or at least on my phone that's how it was maybe it's not anymore no okay it's good on the computer maybe not on the phone loki is down guys to a three cost five power card and wow this is i think people had look at dude i can't i can't even find him in here, here i was he gonna is. say you're sorting by newest you were never gonna find it never man. gonna find him <laughs> like there was no chance you're gonna find loki loki is three costs and now he is gonna draw you a card and he's gonna change your deck right so instead of having the possibility of six cards that you can have of your opponents uh a it's a lot slower of a trickle but on top of that it's gonna go down to you know around four uh on the average what do you think of the new loki this has been something that I've been struggling to articulate why I don't like this. I'm going to say right off the top, I still think it's it's technically good. Like yeah, oh, from yeah. win rate and competitive perspective, like that's not the problem. Um, this is still a very good card, but I, I, I think it should have been a new card that had this ability. I don't think they should have touched Loki. I think that Loki was so good the way it was. I don't think it was very oppressive. I think it was incredibly new player friendly. The deck builds could be built with extremely budget friendly cards. We've talked so many times about how Loki would be the perfect card to have in the new player experience as a welcome back bundle because it gives people the opportunity to you know mitigate the collection disparity between competitors. You copy their deck, you take their Red Hulk, and they kind of got rid of that. And so like I've had this complex like just wrestling of emotions over this change. I don't have the stats that they do. I'm sure that like they have a plan. Maybe they have a forward looking idea of like, hey, we got a card coming out that's going to mess everything up. I'm just not too happy about this change. So I'd be here interested in hearing your take. I think it's a step in the right direction. Um, I will say this. I think Loki in Erisham is better than he's ever been. <laughs> like, yeah. I'm going to be honest. It is like better than he's ever been because you've turned to him and it's even more cracked than it was before. The draw the card what's bonkers to me is that crystal is a three three that draws both you and your opponent a card this is a three five that draws you a card and reduces it's just it just pummels crystal to the ground even more so right like you could make crystal a three five even at this point and people would prefer to play loki over her clearly but i i feel like I, I understand what you're saying in that point. Um, he's worse overall, for sure. He's uh, the the way that like Snow Guard worked and, and Agent Coulson. I liked all that for sure. I mean, hey, I definitely poured one out for my favorite card in the game that had a lot of you know usefulness because of Loki. I think what it ends up being is that he is a design flaw as time progresses, like Zabu was, and so the card generation stuff eventually will be uh, uh, an issue with him. And so that's mainly what I think. I also think this is not his final form. I think we're going to see uh, it's like Dragon Ball Z. You think we're there. We think we've seen the final form of this character. And nope, it's going to be something different again. Not the end of him. Definitely a change of him. And and I, I just want to see more creativity come because I think we definitely figured out Loki. And Erisham Loki was it. That was kind of the whole thing. And it's funny. We talked about to a pretty good debate on the the nerfing of cards that are hot in the week right and then listening to the community and and you know i was very against the doc Ock change you were uh i would say somewhat for it right i mean you're the one that proposed it a bit um and i i i get both sides of the camp i do i i think they nuked all the cards that feel bad in a sense right in, in one big thing i don't love them hitting pull three cards and, and and keeping these other ones alive and they also had some answers to erisham and I still think you can make Erisham very enjoyable. Still think I, it's my favorite card of the year by adding more to that randomness factor than the cards that are built into it, right? Uh, but yeah, Loki is a... We're going to continue to see this card kind of flourish with it. And let's move to that. Let's let's talk about Doc Ock, who uh, I removed his tentacles, man, because he only needs the one now. He's a 4-8, and he pulls the lowest powered card from your opponent's side. 
We talked about some changes that they would do or could do to the card. I don't know if I saw this one coming. No, I didn't see this either. Again, another one I'm not too sure about. Like, it kind of feels like Doc Ock lost his identity. Um, it's not to say that the stat line's not decent. It is. Uh, but it's now no longer shun -cheable, right? So it's going to uh, kind of slide under that. I think that's why it's not a 4-9, for instance, because like, they would have recognized that, like, hey, that's even worse, right? Like, obviously, it's not shun -cheable at all. I just don't see this card being what it was, which is a good thing. It was very oppressive. But I think the challenge was that it was oppressive because it was coming out on turn four with the original effect. And instead of, you know, mitigating the uh, the effect of Erisham having on the Dr. Octopuses and the Leeches of the world, they've kind of taken a shot at those cards specifically instead of Erisham. So there's, it's a very interesting dynamic, a very interesting approach, right? Just like when Collector took a stray bullet for OG Loki. We were like, okay, was Loki the problem? Yeah. Erisham in this case. Or was it Dr. Octopus or Collector? It's a very interesting dynamic. I mean, late la late this year, so like towards, uh, or sorry, last year, late last year, I, this guy's play rate was in the dumpster. Nobody was playing Doc Ock. I mean, at all, at all. The only reason I made a deck with him before um, Annihilus came out is it was the way to play junk decks. Then he was introduced to help against combo decks that got out of control, right? If someone's saving all their stuff, it's like, all right, I'm just going to pull it all out in one turn. They did. They lost the identity of the card. Not to say he's not going to be even better in some circumstances in some decks, but the, the identity of his card, I think he'll be a, a snap forgotten card coming in the future because there is bound to be other cards that do what he does in a sense. And then you compare him to something like Gladiator that's, you know, one less than him. And yeah, it destroys the card, but fill it too. White Widow's a two cost and, and still fills. So, it uh, you know, I don't know. I Maybe the sweet spot would have been two cards. and I, But yeah, I get it with the power assignment. There is a lot they can work with here, but it is funny to see four tentacles come out and it's one card pulled out. And that card could be an Iron Man at that too, making it, uh, you know, even worse. The Shang-Chi effect, I felt like outside of Erisham was enough to keep that, you know, this guy in check. And I don't know, with Erisham in general, I just feel like the fun and what makes sense about it is you're getting that extra energy for the randomness. If they just tone down the, the amount of times you would pull your cards from that deck, I get you giving some chance there, but like, no, this wouldn't be as big of a problem. I have a question for you. I had this thought. Would you have rathered them perhaps straight up just ban Dr. Octopus? Say, take him out of the collection right now, put a little line through him, say, can't be played, as opposed to just kind of killing him like this. Like this, this is a, we're taking him behind the shed. We're not going to let him be played anymore. I would almost rather he stay a 5'10 with his original ability, but them kind of like shadow banning him until they figure out an appropriate thing to do or until Erisham calms down. I'm not saying like we need a ban system in Marvel Snap, but like I had this thought of like, I don't like this either. Like this is not quite what we're after, I think. It would set a precedent that I, I think is a no. I, I think that if you start shadow banning cards or whatever, or just even like, hey, we're working on this one, we're going to shut it down. It would it would create problems. I, I I think that's probably not the answer. And by probably, I mean I, I affirm no on that one. I I get where you're coming from. I think it's just like it, it that would create just weeks and months of controversy of like the future of cards. And then okay, you don't OTA, you just shut it down. Um, it, it's so probably not there. But let's let's move forward. I want to go from Doc Ock. We've got a couple other cards that were in the villain category. I always find it, like I find it funny that Leech. You know, I, again in. Erisham, he was played a lot. Not an Erisham, not near as much. Straight up just took a, kind of a stray bullet, right? Like, outside of Erisham, he's always been bad. But this is the one card that people are not mad. They're just not mad that he has been uh, uh, hit again. Leech is on, like, his third time around the sun of the nerf sun here, and he's down to 4-4. He does what they want him to do to kind of stop Hella, to stop Blob. It's all six-cost cards here, but my god. I, I, no one's ever going to play this guy again. You know, you say that, and he's going to end up being played again. That's kind of the crazy part about it. But no, I think you're right. Like, this is, again, a timeout for Leech where they could have just banned him, right? Like, no one's going to play this card anymore. Um, and uh, I, I don't know. Like, there's been times in Marvel Snap where we're like, we kind of need a Leech, right? Like, we kind of need that release valve that doesn't quite exist right now. And, well, we had it with Discard, where they brought Leech back, but they absolutely buffed it completely out of control, right? And then they had to bring it back down. And So Leech is, like, 
popping in and out of the meta nonstop. But again, it was the fact that it was being played with effectiveness on four with that extra energy ramp of Erishim that was so problematic. So once again, it's looked like it, like the Erishim plot armor still exists a little bit, which I'm not against necessarily because I still think that card is fundamentally fun for a lot of players in the game. You have Cassandra Nova, which is a very stout counter to it. But like, again, I think Leech might have caught a stray here. So two things. First, I think he's, he's best against discard. Like, this nukes Apocalypse to the ground. So it's a way to keep that in check very well. Hello, the same thing. Um, you, you said a point there, and I said this to him as soon as we got uh, the notes and I gave my feedback. I was like, guys, let's get, give Cassandra Nova a little more time against Airship. Like, that was putting a pretty firm stop to a lot of it. I get some of the toxic... I, like, I think just for the game in general, it wasn't just about Airship. I think, like, these cards would creep up, and they were just done. They were done with them. But Cassandra Nova was a very, very hard no against the deck. And Erisha, man, I love, I love it. I love what it's done for the game, man. And so I do want them to keep it the same flavor, if you will. Leech took a bullet. The next one, though, that was right behind it was Blob. And I think this one, to me, was probably the most shocking of just why. Like, I I don't really... He doesn't get played in decks outside of Erisha and Thanos. He has clear counters. Shadow King got buffed. And now, talk about removing more of an identity. It's like... He's continuing to lose. When Blob came out, he would absorb the entire deck. Then it got capped at 15, but they wanted to keep the variance, right? And, and maybe it could be 18, maybe 20, maybe, you know, even higher. I Just like, when is it? When does this stop until it's like his identity is completely gone? It's important to note that this idea of capping him after a specific power stemmed from his Thanos interaction, where they wanted the stones to be like, oh, he's likely to hit 13 power, then a stone. So he stops at 14 or 15 or whatever, right? Um, yeah, his identity is kind of getting lost here. And uh, that's unfortunate. That's the same thing I argued with Loki. I think like we want these identities. Dr. Octopus, we kind of want these identities. We just need to find a way to make them feel fair. Blob has felt relatively fair. I, I still think the Mystique interaction was BS, and I'm glad they got rid of that, honestly. But, like, overall, I think Blob has been relatively fair. He's not, like, in, across all different decks. Like, I see way more Red Hulk than I see Blob. Blob gets to some decent power levels, but I also see people think, hmm, can Blob get to 18? And they they whiff on it, right? There's there's inherent risk with Blob. So, yeah, this was an interesting one to me. And, again, it's uh, it could be some Erishim plot armor. <laughs> It was, th to me, this whole patch was, uh, usually I would say patches are aimed towards the player base rather than the top percent. This patch seemed to be towards the top percent of players. Like, uh, you know, the same 50 people play the same 50 people at the top, and they see these same cards over and over because the, the optimization is, is to play these cards. And so I think they were the biggest winners from this, mainly after talking to some of them, especially. Uh, lastly, though, we had White Widow, which... You know, I think I, I said I wasn't shocked by this because we've talked about it on here. Anytime you look at a cost slot, all right, and it's clear and obvious that one card is the card to put in every deck, which there's one that remains. We already said it, Athena. But for the most part, it depends on the package. But White Widow was that card. And I, I think that this is still fine, man. She's still clogged. She's still okay. She's a 2-5. The clog effect is huge. They still are forced to play there. She still does what she does best. This one to me, I wasn't too mad about. Yeah, this is fine. Um, I think the thing that really catches people by surprise with uh, White Widow specifically is how well she works into so many different locations. Uh, Luke's Bar, Bar Sinister. There's like tons of locations that like on the surface, you're like, hmm, this is actually incredible for White Widow, right? And, uh, and so, yeah, it needed to get toned down slightly, but it's also notable that in almost all the games I play, this Widow's Kiss is zero. Like, I don't usually let that widow's kiss remain at negative three unless i'm completely throwing the location which is possible but um yeah i think this needed to happen because if you're building a deck and you're looking at the two slot it used to be just you just add jeff and now you're just adding white widow yeah i mean they again they've gotten rid of a lot of these cards that are considered the villains of snap not a lot of them left if i were to guess what powerful cards are left to be kind of toned down right uh, I would say Thena. I think Ravona. I think Ravona is 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 getting there. Shut your mouth! I, you oh, do not talk mean about bro, Ravona. I love, I Come love on Ravona. now, man. Oh, Don't do her. that. She already I, got nerfed once. I love her. She Dude, already I, got nerfed once. She does not deserve any more. I, I I I just I think she stands out. I do, but we'll have Why to see. Why would you see that idea in their head? One of my favorite cards. You just ruined bro, my favorite cards at every you cost. Think, cozy. You think this? You think this is me? I'm, I'm just being honest. I'm just being honest. What I think might happen. All right. Well, with all this though, let's move on. Shall we? That was the patches. We've got the new season. So we have like a ton of stuff happening, right? We have like, 
it's been a busy time in Snap between Copycat and Nova. And now we had the patch week, and now we've got the new season uh, arriving here with Deadpool's Dino coming to an end. If you're listening to this, this is your last uh, really full day or two to get uh, Cassandra Nova. So uh, start playing Deadpool's Dino before it is too late. Uh, Alex, alliances have hit and Snap. And I think for a second, and by a second, I mean for a little bit, people weren't that excited. Like, alliances were like just wasn't answering what we personally wanted in snap and so we weren't very excited about the update uh that changed when it when they launched that changed when it launched for me this is gonna be very different per person per alliance but i can tell you full-heartedly a alex and i are in the same alliance and it has been so fun to see each other's snap stuff go on in game like the other day guys we were i was playing at 1 a.m and uh alex sends right after i get an 8q victory go the hell to bed man and i just that one interaction is incredible right because we wouldn't be talking on discord at that time he happened to see that i was awake and shoots that over that's what i love about this i love i i still stand behind i want them to show when somebody in your alliance loses eight cubes yeah that's absolutely hilarious and also there's a hidden part of that joke whereas i'm actually three hours ahead of you and it would have been 4 a.m for me <laughs> so it's like <laughs> I'm yeah. telling you to go to bed at 1 a.m. while I'm up at 4 a.m. Yeah, right. But yeah, no, it, the Alliances stuff has been really, really fun, uh, really interactive. And I think it's cool. I think it's really, really cool. Uh, I mean, st stressful, too, because, like, as content creators, having the 30 limit has been so challenging to the point where I was like, Cozy, I'm just joining yours. I, I'm so, like, I, I was so, so just, like, worried to exclude people that I didn't even launch my own alliance. Like a lot of people have been asking if like, hey Alex, did you launch your alliance? Where is it? I can't find it. I'm like, no, I'm letting Cozy deal with that stress. I joined his. <laughs> Bro, the application, I get having 30 in the the, the alliance, I guess, but the, the application, I couldn't even accept people. I would, first of all, you could reapply if I had to reject one, which feels bad. I feel bad rejecting these, these applications. The second I reject, that person would just reapply. And I still, to this day, I am capped at 30. I cannot get rid of 30 people to where I get, like, if I want somebody, like, when you were trying to join, I had to be, like, ready, set, go. And, like, we had to time it up to get, yeah, yeah boom, boom, you're added. I don't like that a lot, right? Um, and, and it made it stressful. The Cozy Snap Alliance is going to be kind of, um, you, you, there's good days ahead of it. we got a lot of cool people joining this. we got some people in second day. we got even more coming. Uh, so I'm just excited what this is going to uh, evolve into. Uh, probably name change as well. But um, I love the idea that they let you theme it out. There's an official cozy theme, which I don't know if that was on purpose, but I love it. Thank you, Second Dinner, if it was. Uh, killer. The bounties are cool. I left some into it because I wanted... I actually love the bounty system. The rewards I want touched up, but the bounty system, I like the idea that it encourages really unique deck play. It offers, you know, cards to play if you don't know what to play. There are some that are really tough to do. Uh, I love the, you know, the different tier systems. I think they nailed this. It is really interesting. And I like the idea that it's encouraging different types of play styles. You know, Wong and Black Panther as showing on the screen there. I mean, you might see a little bit of coping with Iron Man and Wolfsbane. I don't know if I'm picking that one up, despite the fact that I am a Wolfsbane believer. Actually, you know what? Ravona would be great for Wolfsbane and Iron yeah. Man. But like, I really like this idea here. I would like to see maybe more like rare I, i've only had ever one rare um kind of uh bounty i've never even seen the legendary one you have a legendary one i've not seen that yet so really you're ahead of me yeah, yeah so let me uh so i'll grab this one let's see if i have a rare pop-up destroy cards there's a lot of destroy stuff in here uh move cards i'll do another destroy one and oh you didn't take black panther come on yeah i know right i should but either way i do yeah I, they, they could work on these a bit I'll say this, for the first iteration of Alliances, they've done a good job. And they, they've yeah. talked about wanting to do Alliance battles or whatever. That is uh, cool, man. There's some really awesome things they could do with, like, Alliance versus Alliance. And, like, everybody on each Alliance has one person they go up against. And, like, you have your battle, you do your cubes, and total cubes wins. Massive rewards there. Th cool. I really like that concept. I also like that they brought back Leagues and they fixed that. My worry is, I will say this, my worry about this is, is we have been said in the past that, like, this is the first iteration and we're coming back and then it just doesn't come back, right? Like, they, they kind of gave us that feedback when PC launched. Nothing's changed, right? Like, nothing's changed. We didn't get the true full screen UI, that kind of stuff, right? We're coming on a year here in a couple of 
we actually like a week from now, I think, is the full year of PC. No launch. game boards, still so heartbreaking, man. No game boards. Where are the game boards? Please? I know, right, dude. Uh, but overall, I do think the the identity feel and what they did for the alliances is cool. And just chatting, I'm chatting with people that uh, I, I love you guys in my alliance. I don't know you guys, right? And so like I'm just uh, and I just kind of had to pick who, who's in here. Uh, and it's so cool. It's so cool to just have the different interaction between it and another place to chat and just separate the mediums, right? Like I go on Discord for Discord, but if I want to talk Snap, I can right here. If you guys want to join a Cozy Alliance, there's a lot of them out there, so feel free. Uh, I'm trying to work with some of the people that are in them so that you guys, uh, you know, in the time being, uh, make more of those. But then I think uh, what this will evolve into is going to be something uh, pretty neat, pretty special, and I'm excited about that in the coming weeks. But uh, let's go ahead and... In today's Snapchat, Alex, with a look ahead, as always, with new patches, we've got ourselves, not AJ Colson just decided to bring them up so everybody can look at them. We've got new cards that were data mined. Now, the first thing I want to talk about is some spicy, spicy data mines. There's nothing on these cards whatsoever. We don't know anything about anything here. But I always love to see collaborations between games and even more so games that I like to play a ton. You guys, if you've watched the Snapchat, you know that Alex and I both play Marvel Rivals. In fact, Dexter and I have just been grinding the heck out of the game. And it looks like we are going to be getting an official crossover between Snap and Marvel Rivals. The characters that are kind of exclusive to Rivals like Galacta, Luna Snow, they're going to be coming to the game probably when the game launches, which is only good for Snap and cool for rivals to see. And so right off the bat, big fan of this. Cool to see. Yeah, no, it's fantastic. I mean, any sort of like mutual beneficial, like kind of collaborative, like basically advertising, which is essentially it is a collaboration yeah. between two game properties. That's awesome, right? And if Rivals is extremely successful, that should help Marvel Snap because people might be, I'm sure people in Rivals will get Marvel Snap based stuff and people in Snap will get Rivals based stuff. And I think that's awesome anytime you see that. Um, and I think it creates an ecosystem around Marvel games, which I think is going to be fantastic. I mean, literally, like, the IP is so unbelievably strong. The gameplay in both is so unbelievably fantastic. The only thing you got, you have to do is make sure that you, you market it, get people into those games, right? And I think it's a pretty interesting idea to have these two cross over. And it's cool to see just the week Marvel's had between Comic-Con and then just the game success. And it doesn't feel like uh, in, in both fronts, they're milking it as much. There's like used to be so many Marvel games, so many different, and it feels like things are slowing down. They're taking more time. Uh, Rivals, you can tell they took their time there. So uh, let's talk about the new cards, though, and our first thought of these popping up. Alex and I did not make videos, and so we had to share some of these with you guys. Really cool concepts here. So much so, I think some of these are going to have archetypes receive nerfs and or it's really hard to tell because all this is coming, Alex, after Activate. And I think... We're going to get a slew of cards getting reworked with Activate in mind, right? They, I don't think they're going to bring that, and it's only going to be for new cards. But we start with what I think is the Season Pass card in Agent Venom. It is a Venom Season Pass for those that love uh, this the, uh, the, the, the iconic villain. And we start with Agent Venom, who is a two-cost, four-power card. Always cool to do these early because they do change. On reveal, set the power of all cards in your deck to four. Alex, what are we thinking about Agent Venom? Definitely a good a good stat line at 2-4 to start. Yeah, so uh, Cerebro Enjoyers, like, absolutely losing their minds right now, right? It's super interesting. Super interesting card. Um, it'll be really interesting to see how this card can fit into other archetypes outside of Cerebro. Like, I wouldn't be... Obviously, I'm not being inventive saying Cerebro is going to really want this, right? You change Cerebro to a four, Mystique to a four as well. And then all of a sudden, like, your entire board is just four costs. Um, I, I think there's a lot of potential here. I think there's a lot of potential here. I, I wonder if it'll meet like kind of like similar to like Bass, right? Will like Mysterio, if it get hits by, get hit by this, will it be four, four, four? Yep. Like, will it actually ha be like legit almost Dr. Doom now? Yeah. So I think so. I think that is what will happen. And I, if, it's funny you bring up Bass cause I, I feel like this really hurts Bass actually a ton. This card yeah, is going to hurt Bass a lot. Just better stats, better line. Bass is a one, one. Uh, that goes your cards to three. This is two, and it's the deck, which I know you're not getting them all, but it's almost uh, better because you're not affecting some of the cards in your hand, and so it's a lot safer in a lot of ways. Uh, I agree. Yes, there's Cerebro. That's definitely the first place a lot of people looked at. Um, uh, you know, I just kind of looked back to Bass cards in general, man. We we do what we love best here. We sort by power. You go down here. If you, if you sort by power and you look at some of these, there's some extreme potential with, obviously, the hood, 
Mr. Negative, not so much, right? You don't want to mess with all that. But having cards like you would with Negative, with the Iron Heart or Blob, just getting four power right off the rip, right? Uh, Mystique in a lot of examples, Cassandra Nova. But then you even go down to Iron Man and Bishop, who starts up all the way up out of four. Hit Monkey is going to like that too. I don't think he's going to be too mad. And you look at just cards that are even in the two range and you can really start to get some kind of you know just good curve play like brood and so i think this is going to be an interesting card i'm not gonna be surprised if you might get touched up or something uh alex but uh surely interesting but it's not too crazy to talk about because i just think we have this in some degree at the moment i'd be surprised if it comes out as a 2-4 that is a very strong stat line for a card that i don't see that much of downside for because exactly what you're saying right now there's cards that have Im immensely powerful abilities and their stat lines are like low for a reason, right? There is a reason why Arnim Zola is a 6-0 and not a 6-4, right? Because he should lose the lane that he's splitting from. So it's like pretty interesting to see how this card could impact some of these like really high ability but low power cards. And um, it's almost like, I mean, it's almost like a two turn Mr. Negative to some degree. Like it has a negative feel, but like the other side of it. You know? yeah, yeah, they're going to have to... The, the thing about this card is I think it's a pretty poor season pass card, which is why they're going to bump up the power to 2-4 because it's very limited in deck design, right? Like, yeah. you can't, you don't want to play this with any big card. And so, like, that in itself eliminates so many different decks. And, and so I think that does hurt. It's overall, like, how many people are just going to want to pick it up anyway? And then if it's a big value card, maybe that's it. I think this is a candidate, though, that they... This is not what we're going to see come out to the game uh, in its entirety. Probably one of the more boring cards out of the season. We have way more interesting ones, right? And uh, we're going to hop to the next one in Scream. Now, Scream is the answer to the month prior. We talked about the Activate Month, Madam Web, so much movement with the Season Pass card also being uh, uh, move-focused with Activate. There's going to be... The move is going to have its best month ever by a long shot. This is the answer to it, and this is cool because this shows me that they're going to finally make move way better and have a absolute answer to it that isn't kingpin that didn't work out right scream is a two cost one power card when an enemy card moves steal two power from it once per turn and i'm pretty sure it could be multiple cards just once per turn per card i think right which is silly yeah, so I actually like this card a lot. I think this card's really, really good. Uh, not only is it a counter move, uh, but I think you can obviously use it offensively, right? Like, think about, like, this is literally a buff to, uh, oh my gosh, can't remember his name all of a sudden. Uh, the lizard guy that knocks people to the right. Why can't I remember his name? Stegra. Yeah, let's just Steggy. Name, We're talking let's about just, Steggy. Yeah, let's just name them all, right? Arrow, Juggernaut, Stegron, Magneto. Offense powerhouses, right? With this card. Yeah. Like, yeah, no, it's fantastic. Yeah, it's awesome. Like, I actually really like this card a lot. I like that it works, yeah, the offense and the defense route. Uh, it works with Ravona if she does stay the same. But the, the uh, I mean, listen, anytime you could play Arrow, that's a, that all of a sudden now you've got, this is getting two, this is not even just getting two power. It's stealing two power, right? So playing down something as simple as Arrow, who's a 5'9", is now technically a 5'11 in the play that she's doing. And it's disrupting your opponent. And it's gaining uh, power in another lane. And this makes Magneto way more cracked because Magneto was always do, al already doing two things at once. Now talk about even more so to just build up, you know, uh, a lane that only would need Scream and Magneto to completely win that, you know, whole lane off. Yeah, we're seeing these like two costed cards like Thena, and I think Scream is going to be able to get up to like some very legitimate power levels. To the point that I wonder if it actually releases that way. Um, but uh, I, I'm actually interested, honestly. And there's nothing stopping you from playing Kingpin and Scream, like on curve, like literally yep. on curve, right? And then kind of using them to uh, bounce things back. And then, uh, and again, this is also in theory an Ajax buff as well, because maybe you start seeing cards that with more negative power, because that steel effect's important. And I guess poor one out for Phoenix Force. Yeah, I, I think they're realizing that Nocturne, who's just like one of the best cards in the game, like these cards that have this movement stuff. They're going to be so cracked. We just talked about uh, Marvel Boy with Nightcrawler. Jeff has been around for so long. That variability of not only like keeping your opponent on their toes, but being able to move out of a lane and fill it back up is just so strong, and they need a really solid answer to that that isn't just like maybe even a Shadow King or something to calm those decks down. So love the idea of this a ton. think it's going to be really cool, and I love that it's only on the one side. Uh, so this is probably the card of the month, and damn near close. Scream is going to be really 
uh really good alex but next up let's go to go to the next card here in uh oh this is a good one anti-venom this is an interesting one anti-venom is a four six and it's like it's like the month of power on reveal set the cost and power of your deck's top card to zero cost and power limited synergy but really strong in some areas this is interesting. Uh, poss I mean, listen, is this an actual Howard the Duck buff? Like, I, I mean, I'll leave that for you to decide. Um, I'm. This is one of those cards where, like, listen, in advance, I try to, like, pen and paper some ideas. This one's still blank. Like, I still have not quite figured this card out yet. Um, I'm not quite sure, like, where my deck design is going to go with this. We're still kind of far out from it. Um, I do think this is fascinating, but very niche, very niche in its application. So the way that I look at it is it is niche, but I think there are going to be some decks that really love this card. And so I was thinking about like, what cards do you not care if they go down in cost and power? Well, first of all, one thing that I'm just like not seeing people talk about, and it's like, goodness great. Luke Cage just completely gets rid of this guy's downside. This with Luke Cage right off the rip makes a card zero cost. Insanity, right? Which is insane, yeah. It is but, insane. But a lot of the cards you play, you play for their abilities. Even if, look, listen, you play this on four, you even play this on five, that means you're top taking a zero-costed card. And so even if you have a Giganto in your hand, you could theoretically play Giganto. And, oh, look, it's a Doctor Doom that's a zero. That's still 10 power across, you know, well, across two lanes now. But, like, it's it's still high impact, right? Yeah. Uh, even something like a Sage, if you top deck a Sage as a zero-zero. Right? It's like, okay, this card's still going to get huge. That, that's why I think this is really solid because the, what you have happening here is a way to uh, think about this. You play this card down, you snap on that, right? Your opponent for the next two turns has to think about what you got and all the options of if they can beat that and another play all at the same time. And there's some strong deck design that I don't think people are really turning their wheels here. I think this card's cool. I think this card's great in a lot of ways, man. There's some it's also worth noting that ongoing cards probably won't care too much about this. Yeah, exactly. Let me list some cards off right off the rip. Noel, Iron Man, both cracked. Good God. Who needs, you know, an Iron Man for free is silly, bro. I mean, you can just have a super strong lane somewhere. I think in like even a Tribunal deck, this is really cool, especially if you go like the Luke Cage route. Um, Hood, clearly not bad at all. Mr. Negative, you're not, you're, you're clearly pumped about just getting that out there quick and it's not going to have any con. Blob, Arnim Zola, Bishop at a zero is, who cares? He loses the one power. He's a free play now to just go right after this card is played and start going crazy. Dracula, Dracula, you're like, okay, great. Awesome. You get a free Drac to throw into the deck. Killer, Shuri, Jubilee, White Tiger, even something like Wong. It's like, who cares, man? Who cares about losing that two power? Having a Wong at zero cost that you can hold in your back pocket for the end of the game is, is awesome. How this is going to work, though, in games is what we're going to have to see. And that's why I think overall it may not be the best card. I guess this is one of those situations where Black Bolt becomes necessary. <laughs> yeah. I mean, pretty much, right? It's like for the people that hold on to the Raft cards at the end there. It's kind of that. It's like the Raft built in a card. But yeah, this, Black Bolt's back <laughs> after he was yeah, dead. Yeah, I guess. Black Bolt is back. So yeah, Anti-Venom. Uh, some some cool synergy and uh, overall potential with the card. Let's uh, move on to the next one here. And uh, these ones I don't have uh, a graphics for, but we're going to go to Misery. Let's, let me go ahead and get her front and center. 510 Misery is and very interesting. Repeat the on reveal abilities of your other cards here and then destroy them. Oh, that's a puzzle piece. 510, good stat line, right? Um... This whole month has just kind of awkward deck design around them. Yeah. What do you see right away with this card? You know what? It's so funny you say that because I was like, okay, right? If you do something like, you know, a Cassandra Nova, you play Misery on top, you're losing that power, but you're still, you know, hitting the deck. That's not ideal. You want cards that have really good on reveals that perhaps you want to just re-trigger. I thought about like, okay, what about an Iceman? What about a spider Ham? What about these small earlier plays that you temp well, but you don't necessarily have to rely on their power because the 510 stat line is pretty decent. At the end of the day, I've come to the decision that like, much like a couple of the other cards we've talked about, I just need more time brewing with this because I think that you can do some pretty insane combinations. It's just that like, it's interesting that the cards get destroyed because that also provides synergy with null, right? So like, it's like, okay, can we do something like uh, a gladiator? 
and then you destroy their card, and then you destroy the Gladiator's card. That All that power is being added towards Null. You destroy the lanes here, and then you play the Null on six. I don't know, man. I think there's a lot of really interesting uh, combinations for this here. I think this gives Null a deck without being pure destroy, which is awesome, right? Yeah, that's kind of what I was trying to get at. Yeah, I can right? see that combination. Like Cassandra Nova, you just said, like, oh, no, well, you kill Cassandra, but then you reactivate it, and it's like, well, what's great about that is Null's just going to get all that, right? And so it's like, yeah. that is where I see a bunch of potential, where it's not just this Null Artem Zola play line, right? You have this really strong card that can synergize with it. That destroy just needs, it doesn't matter how many cards they come out with, I think activate's gonna help destroy, but it's the same deck. And I want to make more destroy videos, but adding a Shang Chi or a Lady Death Strike just doesn't give, warrant me uh, to spend the time on that, right? And, and at the end of the day, it's clickbait. It's like it's just what people have seen before. And so I, this is a way to do that. Right off the rip, outside of Null, the way that it reads again: repeat the on reveal abilities of your other cards here, and then you destroy them. This tells me that there is insane synergy with armor. Because if she is played on an armored lane, technically the, it, it should repeat the ability and then keep those cards alive. Yeah. No, absolutely. That I, I would expect that to be the case for sure. And uh, Kyra could also be used in that case as well for uh, for one drops you might want to repeat. But I think that armor is probably a cleaner choice because uh, you might. I mean, heck, you can even play Loki, right? Play Misery on top of Loki, and now, now you're just drawing more, right? And it's like even more cracked. So yeah, I think that like those types of like effects will be really really interesting. But don't, and you're not, but like for everyone listening, don't sleep on the idea of a dis, uh, destroy based deck that is not the traditional destroy archetype that we've known as the same 12 cards yep. over and over again. There is a chance for Null to be an actual legitimate closer now. And Death's still going to benefit from Misery as well. The top end remains the same, but I think how you get there might be a little more interesting. Especially like into Venom, which obviously this is built for a bit, right? And re Venoming up, and there's going to be ways to build this deck. Two other spicy takes with misery. Okay, spicy, spicy. First of all, guys, and again, I, um, I, I, I try my hardest to read cards and really think about where they can work. This is the biggest card in the game that you're okay with. Killing and reactivating. And so this creates a turn four misery plate on top of your electro, giving you into turn five and six. One more energy. You're going to have eight energy now on turn eight uh six which means you could wave and play two cards that are str this is going to revitalize electro who's needed his own identity again and to the same extent wiccan is an on reveal too isn't it yeah is it uh it is. So yeah, like, i think so no is it, it up, i don't remember I, I think if you filled it up to that point yeah but even just electro bro we just concentrate on like isn't that just cracked i mean that's so good it feels like yeah, it actually is pretty awesome. And then, like, because with all that extra energy, you're going to want to be able to play multiple cards. Um, even something like a Sabertooth might actually make like make sense now because now you can combo it out, like, nearly right away with that extra energy, destroy it, and then, like, you can just keep kind of that cycle going of destroying it, building up the Null in that Misery deck. Yeah, it, like, that extra energy is not insignificant, especially while, when you get a re getting rid of that ongoing negative, um, you know, you can only play one card per turn of Electro. And just that combo is straight up better in Wiccan in every single way, because Wiccan gives you the ability to do the couple six cost cards, which is cool, but you're going to have Wave and Electro in the deck already. It's going to work with that tandem, meaning you play Electro down, you have that curve into Misery, you have Wave now to be able to play two six cost cards. You can theoretically do, like, the Null into Arnhem, whatever, Blob into Arnhem, both on the last turn of the game talk about a huge surprise option which is why i think misery is going to be one of the better cards of the month lastly this one's fun good god is galactus home i just hear me out you play shuri you, you, it, it could be another ramp deck i don't know how you do it but you get galactus down whether you want to shuri it or whatever you want to do and you re-trigger you kill all the cards there and you re-trigger that galactus right if galactus is the last card or the only card there, you're going to be able to re-trigger that with 10 power. But then again, that, that won't work though because it does it first and then it destroys it. So I guess you can't do Galactus. Yeah, I don't think you can because even if like you play Galactus first, if there's another card unrevealed at the location, it won't blow up. So like you can't play like Galactus and Death on the same location. Yeah, right? yeah, That'd yeah. Been so cracked, right? I don't. I, I I like where your head's at, but also for the sake of every Marvel Snap player that doesn't want to throw their phone, I hope that does not work. <laughs> I was thinking more of the Shuri route, right? So what you could do is Misery into Shuri on five. She goes to twenty, and you're like, well, how would you take advantage of that? The only answer to that is Heimdall, because then you would move the twenty to the left and have 18 power on that lane that's the best way i could think about it right because yeah you would that would uh you'd play back on that lane so that would be a weird kind of ramp deck 
Does that make what sense? If, is, is there a possibility for like misery into like Iron Fist? Knock Galactus? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just trying to think. There's going to be some fun decks. I think it's like Phoenix Force where I think there's going to be some really unique design. Uh, and that's what I'm excited for. So that is uh, that is misery. And we have one other card again, pretty full. Actually, we had two, two, two other cards to talk about. This month is packed, man. My God, we have Scorn. Who those that don't know, let me throw up Scorn here uh, on the on the screen. Scorn is going to be a one cost, two power card, and the ability of Scorn is what's going to change this card forever. When you discard this. Give its power to one of your cards in play. Return this card back to your hand with plus one power. It's actually pretty interesting. It's basically Deadpool for discard. It's great. It's a one yes. five, you know, in a lot of circumstances. Or one four. It's a good one cost card. Plus, it's doing what you already want to do. This will be a core staple to discard. Yeah, th I'm, this art is actually terrifying. Now, now that like you have it blown up on the screen here, and I'm like really looking at, it, I'm like, damn, what is even happening here? But yeah, for the actual card itself is pretty cool. And like, listen, one drops have like a really cool flavor in Marvel Snap. We often, we often forget how important one drops can be. Like, think about how impactful Kitty Pride is. Even Meek, Meek is legit in discard with some of the shells. You do like the machine gun Meek style decks. And like now Scorn is another option to really generate some cool value. And I think it's a really clever design. I like it. I like I it a too. lot. I think this is going to be a, a top tier card for those that like the discard archetype. Not a lot coming for discard until here, unless they do stuff that activate, which activate could take discard to a really crazy level because you now have a way to target without complete randomness. I think Scorn has awesome uh, synergy as well. With, there's, there's a lot of things you can do with Scorn. Excited about her. Not much to talk about it because it's all discard, but going to be decent. Last card is Toxin, and this is where I think Bounce might have to get nerfed in some capacity. Toxin is a 3-2, and it's the first one to rival Beast in the sense of on reveal. Return your other cards to your hand. They don't lose energy like Beast does, but plus two power for each returned. And so it's a way, it's not going to be as, it's not going to be as good as Beast in the way that it snowballs, but... It's going to be a way to um, to help out this archetype with another card that can go vertically. I mean, this one's really tricky, too. And I was like, is this a Black Swan card? Like, I'm not sure. Like, you play this, you Black Swan, dump the hand. Like, can you do that? But, like, if you, you can't play, like, a Squirrel Girl and then fill your hand with garbage. And you're just like, oh, what the hell am I going to do now, right? It's like, it's such a fascinating card that can go so vertical. But I wonder, and the concern I have is I wonder if it becomes way too much work than what it's worth. Because, like, Cassandra Nova, I mean, That's a good call. it does. It gets pretty high pretty fast, and you don't have to do all this dancing. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, because this would go to 3-8, which is cool. But then at yeah. that point, you would, okay, let's say you played on 3, so on 4, you could beast it back. And then it's like, like, balance is already so freaking complicated, right? And then you, you're you going to add this to it, where it's just even more so. Like, okay, well, you get the toxin back, but then which ones do you actually want to even keep on the board at this point? You're going to have so many hoods, so many demons. And the list is getting tighter and tighter, as we know. And so, like, how, where is this going to fit in? I know there are plenty of balanced people that are like, how do you guys not? This is going to be crap. I'm sure. But this is, uh, we're going to have to see if it's more than what it's worth overall. So, cool season, man. Cool cards. Not necessarily, like, all of them are completely cracked. I think the activate season is way better, which is probably good because people are going to be spending their tokens there rather than, uh, uh, you know, having a ton to spend on this month. But my friends, that is going to take us to the end of this video as we have concluded and going into a new season. Again, be sure to check out the one from last week about Kate Bishop and Marvel Boy who come out tomorrow. Lots that we said about them. We spent like 40 minutes on just those two cards. So go check all that out. And on your way, we're also going to be talking about uh, favorite cards at every cost, Snap's most forgotten cards, and our Snapchat mailbag on Alex's side of the Snapchat. Leave a review, say what's up, and until the next one, guys, happy snapping.